Um, so I guess a brief introduction of myself. I can turn. Um, so I'm originally from North Alabama. I actually spent two years commuting to Nessie from North Alabama and then moved up here very briefly before the pandemic. Moved back home for a couple months and then I'm back up here full time. So I'm going to start with showing just a couple of photo shoots and kind of like walking through my style, um, who I shoot for most commonly, and just so that we can get kind of a taste of what my work looks like. Um, so this right here, this is Mel Massey. Um, I did a test shoot for her. Um, she is Nashville based, but is signed with Wilhelmina out of New York. Um, with this, we shot her on a gray seamless. Um, and then for the lighting, I used two studio strobes bounced into a V-flat and then used another V-flat to bounce that light back into her and fill those shadows. Um, this one right here um, was a collaboration <laughs> um, with a local makeup artist. Um, her name is Four Chang. I work very closely with her. Um, this day in particular, we did four shoots in one day which was kind of a lot. Um, we did it between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m., which is a lot of makeup to get done. <laughs> a whole lot. Um, so this model, um, her name is Abigail. Um, and with this, I just wanted to kind of show um, how you can vary your shots even while you're working with the same model with the same makeup look. Um, so just focusing on showing all aspects of that. Um, so I make sure to try to shoot wide, macro, and then medium as well. This one right here is a more minimal makeup look. Um, so when working with kids in beauty photography, um, there's kind of a fine line between going too far um, and doing just right. Hopefully I did just right on this one. Um, but we wanted to keep it playful um, by doing like star freckles, um, keep that youthfulness in there. Um, this again was a makeup look with four. Actually, the last three were all done on that same day. Um, it was a week before the pandemic hit, so it was kind of the last body of work that I had until recently. Um, this was very 1960s inspired. We tried to do like a bouffant. It didn't really work, uh, but we still went with it. Um, so you have to be adaptable. I'm sure all of you are very aware that you need to be adaptable. Um, you can plan and plan and plan, and things are still going to go awry. So it's just making sure that you're not so set in your ways that you're still able to get something out of it. Um, this again is showing the wide, the macro, and the mid. Um, and then another, I do shoot with men, not very often. Um, men in beauty photography isn't the most common thing, um, but there are still beauty products for men. So beauty portraits for men are very important, and not many photographers are able to do them. Um, so right here, we show two different looks that I did with the same model in the same outfit. Um, so we shot the two on the sides. We're done with a parabolic umbrella and two white V-flats just to kind of eliminate any shadows. The one in the middle was shot with three lights. Um, the one in the front was a parabolic umbrella again. We had a red gel on it and then the two at the sides are going to be strip boxes with blue gels. And then the neon light was actually added in post. Um, this is another test shoot that I did for a model. Um, this one was with Antonio. He was based with OMD, who was out of North Alabama. Um, they've recently been absorbed by Ophelia Management, um, who is run by a Nashville graduate. Um, <laughs> um, I don't know if Eden, did Eden ever speak here? She did not. Um, so Eden runs Ophelia Management. Um, but again, Beauty portraits aren't necessarily what you expect them to be. Um, so you can still look very masculine in a beauty portrait. Um, so this right here is going to be an introduction. It didn't work, Tom. So this was before and after so some of my editing, um, but it looks like it didn't come through. Shoot. Um, but now we're going to get into kind of my retouching process and how that works with beauty photography. Um, so this is kind of a basic guideline that I typically use. Um, so I start with color correction and color grading in Adobe Lightroom. I then move um, the image into Photoshop 
where I use the healing brush to kind of get rid of super obvious imperfections. And then I do frequency separation. Our final step is gonna be dodge and burn and then curves adjustments. None of my videos came through, Tom. Let me see if I can. I'm sorry guys, there we are. Now they're gonna start working. Okay. So here are those before and afters that I was speaking about, maybe. Okay, there are the before and afters. So just showing that retouching and how much it improves an image. And then this one's a different one. TikTok did not like these before and afters. They had very, very strong things to say about them. Um, <laughs> okay, and then this one's gonna be kind of a speed edit. So I can walk you through that retouching process. Um, so this right here um, is where I'm going through and using that healing brush to get out all of those imperfections, stray hairs, blemishes, um, large patches of texture, anything like that. I did choose to leave his scar in here just because it's a very distinguishing feature of his and I felt that I was taking it too far to remove that scar. So we're going through and cleaning up his beard, also cleaning up clothing, because um, your camera sees a lot more dust than you do with your naked eye. Okay, here I'm applying frequency separation. Um, so I prefer to take it a little too far. And then I go in with a brush on um, a masking layer and bring it in slowly. So that's what you're going to see right here. Um, typically my brush right here is at 11% opacity. Typically it's normally around 4 or 5. Um, here I applied a solar curve and then I'm going in with dodge and burn. I'm intensifying those highlights, intensifying shadows. Um, one thing that I've learned, like burn that hair in. It's going to look so much thicker. It looks much more realistic. Um, and then at the very end, let me see if I can speed up back to it. Okay, so we're back on that dodge and burn. And then I go through with color adjustments as well. So that hue and saturation, um, I like to do a final adjustment with that after I've gone through and done my retouching. Um, it kind of helps bring back in some of that texture that you lose with um, frequency separation. It sounds counterintuitive, but it really works. Um, if you bring your reds down, you're gonna bring back in those darker shadows in the texture of the skin. Oh. Um, so this is some of my product work for beauty in particular. Um, we have the makeup palette on the left. Um, on the right, we have this um, toner um, that was shot through a piece of glass um, and it was shot with one light. Um, all kinds of reflectors. Um, I actually had a grid laying on the table upright just to kind of like intensify that light. Um, I wish I had put in a behind the scenes of that photo. Um, I did win an Addy for that as well, a silver Addy. These are a couple more. Um, so I like to shoot products in the very middle of my camera. Um, it's something I'm working on varying, um, but I really enjoy that look. It works very well in magazines and advertisements for beauty, um, but I'm trying, trying to get out of that little crevice that I've stuck myself in. Um, the one on the left is going to be lit with one, one light with a spot behind it, and then I used a reflector in the front, actually two reflectors on each side of my lens to bounce that light back into the label right there. The one on the right was shot in my garage during the middle of the pandemic. Um, so I think it's, it's between 15 and 20 images that are composited together um, of that flower being thrown at that dry shampoo. This right here is gonna be a quick run through um, of a product composite. Um, so with this, I did light painting. This was also done mid pandemic when I had an advanced commercial advertising class. So we got very creative in how we lit things. Here you can see I took all of those light painting streaks from behind. I took each of them out and made a layer out of each one. I then played with them right here. You're gonna see that 
it just wasn't working the way I wanted when I was putting that product in front of those. So I ended up cloning them and making it a seamless backdrop behind it and bringing that product into the forefront. Here, I'm cloning out all of the little dust and cleaning up that composite. I think I went way too fast. That's okay. Um, <laughs> this right here. Um, so recently I was on a podcast with Mark Mosry, who y'all may be familiar with. I think he may have been part of this group at one point, as well as Chris Hollow. Um, I was on it with Savannah Lingle, who I believe spoke with y'all the last time that Nosey was here, as well as Brendan Bazara. Um, there we talked about kind of like our struggles with learning how to be creative on demand and how that was a strange transition for all of us coming from the outside world and being creatives on demand and doing that for other people. So y'all are welcome to listen to that. Um, and then this is just all of the ways that you can find me. Um, so my website is thehaleymalone.com. Instagram is the same. And then my email address is haleymalonephotography at gmail.com. Um, so it depends on how deep I'm going. Um, so <laughs> the shortest I've ever retouched an image is probably an hour. Um, if I'm getting really in depth, not using frequency separation, just dodge and burn to do any skin corrections. Um, or three hours, it can take upwards of that, um, just depending on how precise I want it to be. Um, so if it's going on Instagram, frequency separation does well. Um, just because that's a low quality image, you're not going to be able to see all of those details anyway. Um, if I'm hoping for it to go in my portfolio and it's going to be printed um, 14 by 17, something like that, um, yeah, three hours, easy. Yes, sir. Um, so I have a couple of like. Yeah, so the question was whether I use plugins in Photoshop or not. Um, I have a couple of panels. Um, that are kind of actions. Um, so to create solar curves, to automatically create um, frequency separation layers, I don't typically like doing that. Um, I like to go in and create those frequency separation layers myself. I may just be old school, I'm not really sure. Um, yeah, solar curves is gonna be the main thing. And then um, base layers for dodge and burn. I normally use actions for those. I think I saw another question. Yes, sir. Yeah, so frequency separation, that's when you go into an image and you separate high frequency and low frequency. Um, that's the fancy terms. Really, you're just separating the color from the texture. Um, so texture is high frequency, color is low frequency. Um, so you're able to go in and manipulate color um, without messing with the integrity of the texture. Um, so with that, you can kind of remove the color of a blemish without taking the texture out of the skin. Anything else?